assisted volunteer training, riding. Module one, safety. It's important for your own as well as everyone else's safety that you wear the right clothes, shoes and so on. Long trousers are necessary, as are sweatshirts, polo shirts or t-shirts which have long or short sleeves. Vest tops and shorts are not protective enough, whatever the weather. Module 2, Grooming the Horse. Always speak to your horse as you approach him and remember to fasten the door when you go in. Put the rope round his neck first so that you can prevent him walking away. Then stand beside him, not in front, and slip the head collar on. This is the slip over head collar. The clip should always face outwards. This is the normal one. As before, rope over his neck and stand beside him. Slip on the head collar and carefully flip the head piece strap over his neck just behind his ears. Catch it with your left hand and do it up. Fasten the buckle and tuck the end into the ring below if you need to be able to undo it quickly. When leading a rider, it must be secured in the keeper below the buckle. Always lead the horse straight through the doorway and turn him when he's out so that he doesn't damage a hip on the doorpost. Hook back the door. Always tie the horse up using a quick release knot to a bungee tie or with a clip or to string. Bale of twine is too thick and will not break. There are several quick release knots, all are suitable. Always tuck the free end of the rope through the loop so that the horse can't quick release himself. This one is the knot which the farrier uses. Always pick out the horse's feet into a rubber bucket or skip. Remember always to start by patting the neck or shoulder and running your hand down each leg. Don't just make a grab for the hoof. Make sure you keep the horse safe by always using the hoof pick from heel to toe to remove all mud, muck, stones and indoor school surface. For the hind feet, again, start by patting the horse, then running your hand with clear pressure all along his body before going down his hind leg. This won't tickle him. Always pick up the hind feet with your arm across the front of the leg, never the back. The dandy brush bristles are too stiff and prickly to use on the face, also the clipped areas, or thin-skinned horses. It can be used anywhere else on the horse. Be brisk. You can scrub with it in any direction to remove mud, but always finish in the direction the coat lies.
Kneeling isn't safe by any horse. Bending is fine, but if you have a bad back or are tall, squatting is safe enough. The body brush is best for the face, clipped areas and thin-skinned horses. It can be used on the legs too. Use it firmly, otherwise it will tickle, and always with the lie of the coat. It can be used in the summer on all horses, but not too much, as it will remove natural grease and waterproofing in the coat. Always use the metal curry comb at the same time so that the brush stays clean as you work. But remember to put the curry comb down when you're brushing the face. Always untie the horse, but leave the rope through the string when doing anything around the horse's head. The rubber curry comb can be used to clean the body brush as well as for mud and shedding coat. The plastic curry comb can replace the dandy brush and can be used for manes and tails. The star brush is useful for a quick brush over but will not clean as deeply as the body brush. The dusting brush is very useful for a quick brush over in the summer. The equine hair brush looks like a normal one but is much stronger. It's ideal for manes and tails. Always untie the horse, but leave the rope through the string when doing anything round the horse's head, including brushing it. When brushing the tail, be careful not to pull out hair. If you meet a tangle, stop brushing and use your fingers. The main comb is not for everyday use, as it breaks the hair if used as an ordinary comb. Make sure the sponges are clearly marked so that there's no cross-contamination. Untie the horse. Then use the face sponge carefully on the eyes, lips and nostrils. If there's anything to wipe off, rinse the sponge before continuing. Remember to stand at the side when cleaning the dock area. Use the sponge firmly and then rinse it thoroughly afterwards. Module 3, Tacking Up. Remember to untie the horse to do anything around his head. First put the reins over his head, slip off the head collar and fasten it round his neck. Then stand beside him and with your arm under his neck hold the bridle in your right hand resting on his nose. Separate it with your left hand so that the bit hangs below his mouth. Then raise the bit to his mouth with your left hand, lifting your right hand at the same time to support it. When he opens his mouth slide the bit in and raise the bridle at the same time. If he doesn't open his mouth, slide your left thumb in, which will encourage him to open it. Then slip the bridle over his ears and make sure his mane is smooth underneath it and his forelock is released from the brow band. Fasten the nose band and the throat lash.
safety. When you leave the horse standing with his bridle on, always twist the reins together several times and slip the throat lash through the middle loop before you fasten it. When putting the bridle on over the head collar, make sure the head collar is fastened properly through the buckle. First remove the nose band of the bridle altogether and remember to untie the horse and tie him up again afterwards. Clip reins should always have the clip opening outwards. Clip reins can easily be moved from the bit to the head collar if required. When removing the bridle, first untie the horse, fasten the head collar around his neck and undo the noseband or throat lash. Bring the reins up to the headpiece and slide the whole bridle off over his ears, then lower it carefully, making sure the bit doesn't catch on his bottom teeth. Put the saddle on well forward and slide it back into place just behind his shoulder blades. Make sure the saddle cloth is pulled well up into the gullet of the saddle at the front and the back. On the off side, check that the saddle cloth is smooth and attach the girth. It's a good idea to attach it a couple of holes looser than it will be later. On the near side, fasten the girth. Make sure that it's through any retainers on the saddle cloth. Make sure the girth is not too tight. Don't forget to tighten it just before the rider gets on. Use the first and third straps on most saddles. If there are five, use the centre three. 
make sure the buckle guards are pulled down over the girth buckles. Check on the board to see what length stirrups your rider needs before starting. Measure that length from the top of the buckle to the base of the stirrup and alter as necessary. If you have a new rider, make sure that the measurement is noted on the board at the end of the session for the future. When you remove the saddle, make sure the girth buckles do not hit the horse's fetlocks on the offside. Lift the saddle well up to remove it. Don't pull it across the horse's back. Put the girth over the saddle with the inside resting on the seat of the saddle and take the girth off the saddle in the tack room, not while it's on the horse. Module 4, Holding the Horse. Whenever you're waiting with a horse with or without a rider for the rider to mount, have stirrups adjusted, do exercises or just for the whole ride to be ready to move off, stand in front of him and hold the cheek pieces of his head collar, not his bridle, securely to keep him still. Module 5. Leading the horse. Whenever you lead the horse, have the long end of the rope looped forward and back through your hand, never coiled round your hand or your wrist. When you lead a horse, you should be positioned just in front of his shoulder, any further back and he can turn in front of you, any further forward and he will tend to think he ought to follow you. The same thing, exactly, applies in trot. When you lead him to the mounting block, you will need to step backwards in front of him for a couple of steps to make sure he stops in the right place. Then hold him correctly to keep him still. Make sure he's straight as he moves off. Don't turn until you've passed the mounting block. If the hydraulic platform is being used, lead the horse up to about two strides before it, then walk backwards in front of him to stop in the right place. Move him forward or back a step so that his forelegs are almost square. When your rider is mounted, walk the horse straight forward until he's past the mounting block, then turn him as necessary. If you are only the rider's helper, hold the rider's heel as you move off. Module 6, Helping the Rider. When you're asked to hold the rider's heel, have your hand round the actual heel, not the leg. Always do this as the horse moves off from the mounting block or platform. Once the horse is moving, you may not have to hold the heel, but walk in the same position and be clearly aware of what the rider is doing and feeling. If necessary, repeat the coach's instructions to the rider, looking up and speaking clearly and loudly enough.